single people here, raise your hands. Yeah, keep them up so we can all make a mental note. But you're having to put your glasses on so you can have a look round. Um, you can... You can... You can raise your hand half master if you've got a partner, but they're working nights nice this week. Because I was seeing somebody, but I got dumped. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for leading that sympathy. Um, I wasn't that bothered, actually, though. It was a bit like the disappointment you feel when you come to the end of one of those moving walkways at the airport. <laughs> and you know, you sort of go, hmm. <laughs> so my friends all tell me I'd meet somebody if I went on holiday, but I have a phobia of going away alone and being befriended by a British family who feel sorry for me. So I get to be the person who flat sits my friends when they go away, and there's one friend who's paranoid about getting her keys cut, so she hides them in an elaborate place and then sends me a text message about where that is. Go to the cupboard around the side of the house where the electricity meters are. Reach up onto the high shelf for a cracked flower pot. In the flower pot you'll find a gardening glove. Inside the gardening glove will be the first in a series of riddles. <laughs> You'll need a compass, a spade, a map of the local area, and a Latin dictionary. Good luck. So, I've been going to the gym a lot, because I heard that's the new place to find romance. And last week, I got chatting to somebody nice in the jacuzzi. It was going quite well, but perhaps I shouldn't have said, it's an acid bath, and pretended to dissolve. <laughs> But I did have to start training properly in the gym a few months ago because I got a wild card into Wimbledon, into the tennis. Yeah. I've been trying for years. And I think what made the difference this year was I sent in a photo of myself sitting in my friend's wheelchair. I did have to crop the photo because you could see my friend lying on the pavement. Actually, it wasn't my friend. It was just someone I found at King's Cross waiting for her family. Uh, <laughs> No, don't judge me. I wouldn't really lie about being disabled. In fact, I went to an event at my local library and a woman handed me a feedback form and said, would you mind ticking the box that says you have a disability because that helps us get funding? And she must have sensed that I was worried about lying about it because she looked me up and down and she said, don't worry, depression counts. <laughs> but if depression counts as a disability, I wonder if you can get a special car sticker for it. A bit like the wheelchair ones, but just with a sad face. <laughs> and a speech bubble saying, couldn't possibly walk further with my shopping, might kill somebody. <laughs> well, I did have a one night stand, though it didn't technically last a, a night. And I think that's the worst, isn't it? When you take somebody home and then you have sex, and then at three in the morning they say, well, I think I'm gonna be going now. Because essentially what they're saying to you there is, I'd feel less dirty if I got on the night bus. <laughs> so my latest plan to meet somebody is I'm going to go on that Friends Reunited website and I'm going to rediscover somebody from my past. Although there is a flaw in this, because I didn't come out as a lesbian when I was at school, because it was the 1980s and they still burned gay people in the north of England. I hope nobody's shocked to hear that I'm gay. I can see some of the men look quite disappointed. Um, <laughs> I can see that. But I did come out to my parents when I was a teenager, and I was surprised because they were really excited, like, oh, my daughter's done something interesting. And I was the one who was all ashamed and inhibited, didn't want everyone knowing, but they started going around telling all the neighbours, handing out flyers, printing out t-shirts, trying to get us all on Kilroy. My mum tried to make me feel better by telling me something about her and her friend Joan on holiday. <laughs> But once you have come out to the family, one of the hardest things you'll ever have to do as a gay woman is uh, explain away a pregnancy. <laughs> Even though it was Christmas, they wouldn't believe it was the Son of God. Uh, but Christmas is now far less eventful than that. And I wanted to finish by sharing with you the highlight of uh, my last Christmas, which was when this newsletter came through my door from the Peckham Rye Safer Neighbourhoods team. I don't know if anyone knows Peckham. It's not that bad, actually. All those yellow murder signs do brighten the place up. <laughs> don't drink and drive. It's so much nicer to be alive. 
if you want to enjoy the festive season, forget your car for a very good reason. <laughs> Remember your loved ones waiting at home. They don't wish to spend Xmas alone. <laughs> They'd much rather have you home with them to enjoy the Xmas fun than to have the sad news that you've been found dead in a wrecked car. <laughs> I think she lost her sense of rhyme and rhythm. So. Um, but we mustn't laugh, no, we mustn't laugh, because there is a serious message there, and that is don't write poetry just after a stroke. <laughs> so, on that note, I shall leave you, Brixton. Thank you for having me. Enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you.